Hi, Stuart. Thanks very much. Indeed, this is kind of the Europe's um, aviation capital, aerospace capital. And here in the city of Spas, I have a lot of engineers who've been working on this whole project in constant touch with what's going on in Florida right now. You know, when you have internet problems at home, your box isn't working, you can't get TV or video. Well, that's basically what they're dealing with right now at NASA in Florida. There's an internet connection, believe it or not, between the control room, a bit similar to this one, and the actual uh, the rocket itself. They're trying to, they've managed to get some sort of contact again over a Wi-Fi system, and they're trying to see if it works properly. And if it does, then they have to test a whole bunch of things. Just so you know, Stuart, I've got with me the CEO of um, the City of Spas, Jean-Baptiste Desbois. Jean-Baptiste, this is third time lucky. Are, are we going to get there? Yeah, so yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, just a... Uh, uh, I can say a kind of a small trouble that they had. It's repaired now. It's very, it has been very, very quick repaired, and they are quite uh, optimistic in, uh, in uh, Cape Canaveral. Just we are waiting for the delay. So, um, so Jean Baptiste, this the uh, CEO of City Dispatch, telling me that the problem has been fixed, and now they're basically just testing it now to make sure that this works. Stuart, this is the third time, like we said, because there've been problems with the leakage that you mentioned. There've been problems with storms. This project is already well overdue. It's late, it's cost a lot more, but they say they've got time, they've got to make this work. The idea is to do a tour of the moon around it, and then a couple of years actually um, put astronauts on the next one, and then of course after that actually land on the moon and use that to do some sample tests on the moon and eventually use what they've learned there to do a rocket launch with humans maybe to Mars, maybe in a decade or so. That's what's really the challenge that's in front of us. And so it's pretty complex. Um, it's going to take some time before we get to that stage, though. So, but we're looking at a moon landing in a few years' time, maybe. But of course, they're not the only ones. The Chinese also are very keen to send their own astronauts up onto the moon as well. So it's a race to space once again. Chris, let me just ask you, I mean, a lot of people might be watching this story today thinking um, we went to the moon. That was quite a few years ago. Why is there so much excitement that this um, could well be happening again? And, and how come it seems to be proving so difficult? Indeed, it's a very good question. Jean-Baptiste, would you like to answer that? Yes, it's a good question. Uh, uh, in fact, it's uh, difficult because uh, uh, we, we, we went to the moon 50 years ago. So that's a kind of... A, uh, in the research that we, we lost now, in fact, and it's very complex to, to go to the moon. It is a very heavy uh, launcher to, to go there, but that's very, very important to, to go there, to, to understand more uh, the link between the, the Earth and, and the moon. First, uh, this kind of copper between the, the Earth and the moon. It's also very important, and Chris told that, uh, to, to go to Mars, because uh, we will install NASA and uh, the ESA, the European Space Agency, JAXA, the Japanese one, Canadian one, and so on, will install around the moon um, a lunar uh, station around the moon uh, to replace the ISS, which is around the Earth. And thanks to this gateway, this lunar station, lunar platform, we will launch um, rockets to Mars. Well, that's very, very impressive. It will be in a few decades. Uh, yeah. Chris said there. Yeah. And I also, Stuart, one thing which someone who has worked on the Orion was telling me, the Orion space capsule was telling me, is that um, once they actually, maybe they can launch the Mars launch actually from on the moon, it means you haven't got like the hassles we've got right now with the atmosphere having to get through, the storms. You're already outside the Earth's orbit, so it might actually be easier to do a, a Mars launch directly from the moon. So that means all the complications that we're talking about today and we've been mm. talking about the last few weeks wouldn't necessarily be there anymore. Um, and so also you will, would, they would also have all the apparatus for breathing, for living uh, on the moon, and they can use all that experience and take it straight to Mars. Of course, we're a long way from there. We're still trying to work out if they fix their internet problems and their connections between the rocket and the control room. That's where we are right now. I should tell you that in this room here, I've got a lot of people who've actually worked on this um, spacecraft over the last few years. A lot of the work has actually been done in Europe mainly in Germany, Italy, and a little bit in France. Mm. They helped make the propulsion system for this Orient spacecraft. And they also made some of the solar panels to keep it, of course, uh, in, with the energy that it needs, as it spends about three and a half weeks in space. Mm. And we will have 
for the next mission or next missions, uh, at least three European astronauts, and we hope one moonwalker among them. Yeah. It will be a very, very great moment for Europe. So as I'm looking at the control room, we're still waiting to see uh, when this is going to take off. Um, I'm sure, Stuart, when you've had internet problems, it's taken you days and days from your operator to come back and fix your problem. They're hoping to get this fixed in a few minutes. And if that does happen, remember, there's a two-hour window that the NASA have to actually launch this rocket. So you know, they're still in their schedules. They're still in their time zones. And, you know, um, what? And the weather's fine there at the yes, moment. Yes, it, it is. It is. No, no, hurricane, no hurricanes. No, you need someone? No storms and so on and so on. La fille Veronique. So as um, we're watching this, just like you are, what you need to know as well is that once the, the Orion, um, there's three dummies inside this spacecraft, okay, no humans, and they've got a lot of sensors on it as well to see how um, to see how the, they handle the situation before they put humans on. And just before we go, I would like to introduce you to someone else who's I've got a guest here. Her name's Veronique Bonnet. She's one from Airbus, and she was actually one of the people who helped build this spacecraft. Veronique Bonnet was the manager of the Orion project. So this is partly European, right? Right. Tell so, me more. Okay, so the Orion uh, mission, uh, what we call the European service module, is built uh, in uh, Germany uh, with um, a consortium of um, 10 uh, countries uh, all over Europe. So France, Italy, Spain, uh, Norway, uh, Switzerland, etc., and they're all participating to uh, the building of the of this magic spacecraft. Uh, it represents more than 200, 2,000 equipment, so it's really a, a big, big, uh, massive uh, project. How long have you been working on it? Uh, I've been working on it uh, during two years, uh, and it was really. Uh, a passion uh, to work on this spacecraft. Okay, well, thank you very much, Veronique, who worked on the spacecraft, watching just like us. When this will take off, we'll be back with you, of course, when we have a lot more news on this in the coming minutes. Back to you. Thanks very much, Chris.